The FBI noted that one of the things that AIM was shifting its direction towards was protecting the Earth. At the same time, some 27 multinational corporations were coming into this region, uranium and oil uh, and other mineral companies, and basically leasing and staking claims throughout the entire Black Hills region. During the same time period, uh, the FBI declared AIM to be one of the most dangerous organizations in the country, and they began discussing the need for paramilitary assaults on what they considered to be certain AIM strongholds. Pine Ridge, the capital of the reservation, is about 10 miles from Wounded Knee, but it's as tense as the small community which has been held by the militant Indians for six days now. The takeover of Wounded See, one of the things that, that the American government realized, and it, they saw this at Alcatraz, and, and they saw that it, that it was really more pervasive because they saw it in AIM, and that is that the majority of the American citizens agreed with us. Right? They, had, they felt some kind of sympathy or understanding. The majority agreed with us right? that the government was in the wrong in its dealings and treatment of native peoples. So, so, and to the government, the way the government operates, anytime any grassroots or any, anytime any group of people start to get popular support, this becomes a threat to the government. AIM got labeled by this Eastland Subcommittee on Un-American Affairs as a terrorist organization. And between 73 in 75, the government with the FBI, they were, waging, they were, they were liter literally waging a contra war against now all of the AIM people and the traditionalists, the ones who had supported Wounded Knee. They were trying to eliminate this thought. You could look at the film footage of the news media of, uh, of FBI paramilitary units uh, engaging in sweeps or patrols, and it looked just like Vietnam. I mean, there was absolutely no difference. There were helicopters, there were armored personnel carriers, there were tanks, there were uh, a lot of uh, military equipment and FBI agents who looked like they were in combat. In June 1975, two FBI agents were killed on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. The community that they launched their attack in was a community of Oglala. In the course of the firefight that took place that day, one of our people, Joseph Stunts, was killed, and two members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation were killed. And as a result of that, you know, three men stood trial for it, Dino Butler and Bob Robidoux and Peltier. Then that's when they kind of just put the finishing touches on the momentum that AIM had. We had that Oglala firefight and afterwards we got arrested you know he was the only one that came forward him and Neelock and Tina came to our defense and helped organize in the communities and when we got to town and checked into this hotel and I turned on the news and all the news in these in the local stations was really talking about you know there were going to be terrorist attacks that the AIM militants were coming, they were going to be disruptive, they needed to have a lot, of, they needed to have a lot more security. And so they had created this paranoid climate. See, and all the media was carrying it. It's almost like, you know, like the government was writing it. You know, so we were not liked in that town. So we had a, a press conference. And right, I mean, right away and challenged them on it. Here are women and kids, and they met with every church group. They met with every women's organization, every community organization. Met and just explained, look, we're just here. We don't want to be, you don't want us here. We don't want to be here. We just want the opportunity. And basically, through that kind of networking and then the, the reality that hold it, these, these aren't Indians, they're human beings. See, that reality was emerging in Cedar Rapids. And this juror got to see it. You know, because we had a positive influence in that community. And, and in the end, when push came to shove, on the jury deciding on guilt or innocence, this played a role.